Hello and welcome, Arsa Jim in the hangar. Today I will take a closer look at the Clearview 2. IF Drone Tech was kind enough to send me this as a free review sample, as well as their Clearview goggles module. I'm curious as to how this thing compares to something that I know, like for example the Rapid Fire. I really like the Rapid Fire. My fault was that I didn't calibrate the rapid fire receivers so that's a dumb mistake to do most of the magic won't work and i also compare it of course to something that i used for years now i don't know how long this is the fr632 it was like 50 bucks diversity receiver that just takes two antenna signals and decides which image is the better and takes this so that's what we used until one or two years ago Rapid Fire worked really well for me. Those are these kinds of diversity modules that kind of take both images and can fuse them together and reconstruct a working image, a, a flyable image. Doing this without computer tricks, as I know, without latency, but rather with some chip magic. Don't ask me how this is even possible. And Clearview does the same. They also have a similar magic in their Clearview ground station. And this is the Clearview 2.0, which has nice features like a cool OSD screen where you can set up a lot of stuff, the behavior, and a nice little OLED screen in the front. Build quality is really high. It's actually, it's a quite small device. Can be borrowed from two to six S LiPos. It has this very, very small like two millimeter barrel connector here it's not standard it's a bit of a downside and it has two av outputs and two normal sma antenna connectors that's about it on the back side you can tape on this aluminum block here which then can be screwed to your tripod as i said in the menu structure you can i uh, maybe i should i should show this to you if we just scroll up and down, nothing happens. If you press and scroll, you can change channels. You see FETCHAC 4, FETCHAC 4, 5, 8, the frequency and the voltage of your LiPo that powers the ground station. If you see the CV icon, clear view, then it has a solid lock. If I long press it, I get into the screen and i don't know what happens here to be honest okay you've seen weird behavior now we're into this menu this menu looks like an old dos program but it does the trick clicking it doesn't do anything but you have to long press it to go there change band from f i think you can change bands also outside with some short command set video format uh, it's Default to auto, but you can have NTSC PAL. I prefer auto, of course. Clear view response. I think this is the, the tweaking you can do if you have different kinds of cameras which are out of sync or which have weird sync pulse issues. Rapid Fire has a similar setting. Band analyzer app. Oh, this is really cool. So you basically get a spectrum analyzer here, which tells you on which frequencies there is the most RF noise. And it looks very nice to me. Lost drone finder. Remove goggles, use your earbuds or turn on monitor volume. Listen to the tones produced. Highest and fastest tones when antennas are facing drone. Change setup options. Have bands active and deactivated, which is nice. On screen display content. Have the band channel showing up here. So it's all about this lineup here. Channel hidden frequency. I like to have the frequency readout here. Antenna use. The RSSI meters right and left are cool. Both RSSI. Or the max RSSI. I kind of like both. Voltage showing is cool. Came from uh, I chose PAL or NTSC. Features and options. Diversity, okay. 
left, right only, clear view. You can set a battery alarm there for your feeding battery, that's nice. There is a lot of stuff to be set up there. If you have questions, ask me and I will answer them in the comments. But the main thing is you power this up. Maybe you swap the channel here. So you scroll all the way down, change band. F4. Oh, that's quite quick to change. I, oh, I think I like this. That's nice. The usability of this thing is really great. And I should also mention that here on the side you have some pins for firmware upgrades. There is an adapter for firmware upgrades as well. Here is the clear TX on 25 milliwatt mobile phone as reference to always walk the same path. Two identical screens which are fed from different receivers. I use the same antennas on all. Do two test runs, one with the lens cap on to only have black image and one with the video for you as an additional reference. And with the software I try to check the video quality in a more scientific way. Is this $300 ground station better than the 150 goggles module? In this scenario, this little FR632 here will be the budget king. It's like $50 or maybe even less. This is $300. And the king of convenience, of course, is a goggles module. So now this is FR632. This is clear view. You see it here. With this method, you see the environment I'm going through. But it's the hallway in the third room. This is where the signal for sure it's quite bad. And now I will head back. There is multipathing. Here we have some metal or tin. I can go one round here. Behind the car is the worst case. And now head back in the studio. So let's let's take a look at those two curves. You see, in the first mountain range has a big valley, but that's just an overflow there. So the FR632 freaked out. The second mountain range, which looks like an M shape, was first just in the garage, and the second bump is the car. Here on the clear view side, on the right side. You see the first bump is smaller, that's just in the garage, and the second bump is the car. So behind the car it was similar bad, but overall I'd say the clear view only struggles for the first uh, amount, for the first mountain, where I went away, so my body was blocking the antenna and I got to the end of the hallway. Since I turned myself and faced to the receiver, uh, the quality got better. So lower is always better, but that's for sure. So this is the noise metric. And the other metric that I found in this program is the natural image quality evaluator. You can read, it's very complicated, but it just judges the image quality. And we can see a comparison, an Excel chart of this as well here. For the second test, I overlaid you the two charts here in color so the orange one is the fr632 and the blue is the clear view higher means more error so the bars or that the line should be low to be good like here you see how it freaks out and the orange line goes all the way up because there's a massive image distortion here yeah the whole passage here after going down the stairs the FR-602 is worse and I agree to this. And behind the car the program thinks that the FR-602 is better, but I'm, I'm not so sure about this.
that's the computer's idea how to judge the image quality. What do you think? Do you agree? Okay, now let's swap this FR632 versus the rapid fire. In this whole noise test, the rapid fire performed better than the clear view, and I even had to move the curves to have the baseline on the same level. For some reason, the clear view was at a higher noise level the whole way through, but this might be due to my test setup. For better visualization, I also used a one second moving average. So it's a trend line here on the chart, and it looks way better this way. Lower is better, as again, as always in these tests. Last but not least, we have the image quality test here between rapid fire and clear view. At the beginning, the lines are at the same level. And then sometimes rapid fire freaks out. You see the moving, the rolling image, so it completely loses it here, where the clear view stays, stays good. So most of the times, they're both around the same level. But if it freaks out, you will not be able to fly with the rapid fire in this situation here. So this fourth test has to go to clear view. So overall, I'd say we have a slight advantage with the clear view. But I would totally be flying also with rapid fire for convenience. Okay, so that's it for my clear view review. So I hope you liked this review about the clear view 2.0. Thanks a lot to Ira, I have Tron Tech for sending me this stuff. I, I was asking for it like literally years ago. <laughs> Maybe now that the time of analog is coming to an end. No, uh, anyhow, uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.